All right, so how do we get circles on the page? Um, must be a, a question you've all been asking yourself since the start of the lecture. Um, does anyone have any, um, I guess given what we've seen, we have most of the tools to actually create the scatter plot. Um, so um, most of those page and browser I guess specific things you use just JavaScript for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you you can mix jQuery or really any other library with D three. People do a lot of D three with um, like more advanced JavaScript libraries to like sync data between plots. Um, but I think in JavaScript it's just Window X. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, there's like just a JavaScript browser object that has like position X or like width X. Um, and that I'm not sure. I think I think you'll have to update that if like a user shrinks or drags their browser. Um, but responsive visualizations are something that D3 is actually pretty well suited for once you pick up on that event of like window size change. All right. So given what we've seen with D3, does anyone want to? Um, try to think about what we're going to do to actually uh, visualize these circles. We saw that we can select elements. We saw that we can scale data values now. We saw that we can mutate elements. Is there anything else that we need to do functionality-wise? So we will we will need to do those, um, but um, let's just worry about actually getting circles on the page. We'll fill we'll fill them after we draw them. So we need circles. Um, we also I would argue haven't really dealt with our data yet. Um, it's there, we can console log our data. But it's not actually interfacing with anything on the page. Uh, so this will come bring us to our last and one of the more uh, I guess misunderstood aspects of D3. So if you haven't been paying attention, um, now is the half hour that if you don't pay attention, you probably won't be able to do the project. Um, so my recommendation, if I was a student in my own lecture, I would probably pay attention. Uh, but the hardest thing to wrap your head around as a newcomer to D3 is this thing called the data bind. And the data bind does this magical, magical thing um, where I'm going to start mentioning this a lot more, this term. Um, has anyone heard the term the DOM before? D-O-M. Does anyone know what the D and the O and the M stand for? So this uh, is the acronym for a web page or the elements on a web page. Um, so it's called the document object model. And it's basically, if you break it apart, um, the web page is the document, the objects are the HTML tags, and the model is the representation of them 
internally in the browser. So the browser is actually just a bunch of like C++ code and a bunch of like C++ objects and functions and class hierarchies. And it sucks in text of HTML and it builds out these really complicated object hierarchies, uh, which create the DOM. And what things like JavaScript and D3 do is it allows us to very uh, somewhat easily access the elements of the DOM without needing to deal with all of the complexity of the, the hierarchical representation. And the, so libraries like jQuery, all these other libraries give us this easy function to interact with it. The thing that D3 gives us on top of that is this idea of using data to interface with the DOM. So the DOM in this case are our visual elements. These are our circles. These are our HTML tags. These are anything that we want to visually display. This can also be kind of, it's not exactly the same, but thought of as the aesthetic. And the data is our numbers here. So similar to this up here. It's a way. And when we have a visualization, we can think of having this JSON data and each one of these elements of circles on our page basically get mapped to one of these data. And based on the values of the data, we can update the positions of the circles. In D3, this magical link is made through this thing called the data bind. And it has a very SQL-like, uh, a very SQL-like spirit behind it. And um, if we follow along on the page here, um, so to start, we do this weird thing where we optimistically find out if there's any circles already out there on the page. Because um, you can imagine the context of these visualizations, we might already have some elements floating on our HTML that we want to link this data to. Um, and this data is going to dictate the X and Y position, the color, the shape, anything we want. Um, and this data is going to be used to basically semi-dynamically update what these attributes actually look like. So in here, we first say, again, this is a scatter plot. Are there any circles on the page? Let's just try to select some circles. Um, if there are circles, let's hook them up to our data here. So maybe we find circles, maybe we don't. Either way, we want to join them to our data. And remember, we have this function that takes an argument data. So no matter what data we're actually visualizing, it's always going to be stored in this variable data. But this can actually just be something like, I can name this John if I want to. The name of the variable doesn't really matter. The, this enter function is actually just a selection. So dot enter right now is not going to really make a whole lot of sense of why we need it. Um,
All right, so we have lots of lots of things open on the page just to actually make this work. Um, but the things I want to show. Um, so down here, we basically have three circles. You can see that. Those circles, again, remember we have three data here. We have Soma, the mission, and Sunset. And in here, we're doing this thing where we find out, are there any circles on the page? If so, we need to hook them up to our data. So we do dot data, dot enter, um, basically finds out which elements are on the page and which elements are off the page. <laughs> And it does this through basically a join in JavaScript. So the reason we first need to select our circles is in case we do have circles on the page, they might already be bound to data and we don't want to keep rebinding data. In our case, the intersection of circles and data in this Venn diagram is actually, they don't intersect. We don't have any circles. All we have is data. And these dot enter selections correspond to uh, enter is basically the circles we need to put on the page. There is also a dot exit selection, which is circles that we need to remove. And in this, it corresponds to, or in this Venn diagram, dot enter is the data we need to draw. That's uh, exit are these circles that no longer have data. And then in the middle here is things that we have to keep on the page and so those are the three types of selections. And I can talk in just a second. Uh, So these are on the web page. You just can't see them. Oh, um, so I actually, earlier I wrote this um, JSON, or I called my draw function and I passed in JSON data. So to trace this, it goes, draw with JSON data runs the draw function, which in this case, I just named the argument John just to show that you don't need to call it data. Um, and in here, this John corresponds to the actual data objects. So these objects are John So these three objects are John, they get bound here in this circle data bind and then for each one of these data points we append a circle to the page for those data points. Yeah, so you can imagine a scenario where we already have circles drawn on our page and we switch the data that we're actually binding. So we might have 10 circles on our page, but the data they correspond to, that they were initially bound to, could no longer be associated with the page. So in that case, we want to remove the circles that don't belong there. Uh, and 
guess I'll show an example. Uh, so this is one of my favorite demos of like a interactive visualization. Has anyone seen this before? All right, so this is a really awesome project. Um, it actually got a fair amount of press recently because there's been a lot of legislation around regulating Airbnbs in San Francisco and New York. Um, the reason I showed this, uh, we'll talk about it more in the class as well, is that it has a lot of elements of a pretty well done interactive visualization, but it's not complex enough that newcomers to visualization won't be able to build it or understand it. Um, and it's all built in D3. All of its data is open. Um, and as an example of when we might want to remove things. So in this case, it segments all the Airbnb listings that it's plotting in San Francisco by, is it for the entire home, a private room, or a shared room? And when you click on these, it subselects them on the map. So in this case, if we have all of these selected, this is just the data bind. When this loads, it does like a dot enter call. But after the page is load, loaded, when we do a um, user interaction, it then basically refreshes the data and it says the user doesn't want to see private room. So find me all of these circles that are currently shown that correspond to private room and remove them from the visualization. Um, so that's where exit comes into play. We're gonna use it a lot more when we get to interaction in week four. Um, but for now, know that it's the, I guess, inverse of dot enter. Other questions on the data bind? Yes, um, so in, in JSBin, it's a little strange in that they have an iframe. So if you hover over the like right output panel, if you uh, find where the right output panel is here, and then inside of here, you're gonna see this iframe and like a separate HTML inside of it. Yeah, so if you actually open up your console, you can like select elements on the page. Um, this is mainly just um, a weird quirk of the JSBin page. Usually it's much clearer if you just have a local file that you're, you're opening. Um, but an easier way when working with, with JSBin is to potentially just console log. So since it does this like auto refresh, if we console log our circles, we can see that there's these like, it doesn't really bunch them together, um, but it outputs all of the, uh, the circles there. I showed you their circles, but where are the circles on the page? Nope. Um, so the JavaScript is in the head, but we're actually calling it inside the, the body there. And even if we were calling the function inside the head, since the JavaScript actually like dynamically generates the elements, um, it doesn't matter whether it's in the head or the, the body. Where and why are there no circles? Uh, 
Oh, um, second thing that I slightly glossed over. Um, so D3 can draw any HTML or it can append any HTML or SVG tags just by their name. So before we could have selected like H1 and since H1 is a valid HTML tag, D3 interprets string H1 as look for H1 tags. And just um, in the same manner, there is SVG circle tags that we can just say, here, draw an SVG circle object. Um, and it knows how to draw a circle object for us. So we shouldn't need to. Um, I showed you that the circles are in the HTML. We actually like created the tags, but the tags just don't have any visual representation. It is in a strange way. Uh, what radius do you think it defaults to? Mm -hmm. So we have circles. They have no radius, they have no fill, they have no position. They're basically nameless floating tags that are invisible on the page. Uh, so the last, the last thing that we'll actually uh, do here, um, show the circles by giving them an X position, a Y position, a radius, and a fill color. 